Now, the world's biggest electoral process is underway, and these elections started on April 7th and run until May 12th. At this stage, the opposition is taking a lead, but there's still millions of votes to be cast. Earlier this week, Charlie Nera met with Anandita Chatterjee right here in our studio and began by asking her about the huge numbers involved in getting Indians to the ballot box. So if you actually look at how many people are voting in India, that's 815 million registered voters. Just to put it in perspective, that's the number of voters registered in the US, in the UK and Denmark together. And you still have space left for more. So the election happens every five years. Uh, just what kind of changes have they introduced to limit electoral fraud this time around? There are these electronic voting machines that um, has that lists all the candidates in the certain in, in every constituency. So you can go and vote. These are all secret ballots, so nobody knows what's happening or who you are voting or who I am voting. There are about 11 million security personnel just on the streets every day to make sure that there are no frauds, um, there is no sort of booth capturing as we know it as. One of the interesting things, Charles, uh, right now in the electronic voting machine is a button called None of the Above which basically means you can go to the booth, you can vote, but you can actually not vote for any candidate. And what it does is it sends a message to the election commission saying that all the parties or all the candidates that you fielded, I'm not happy with any of them. Moving on to the political parties, in uh, layman's terms, what are some of the uh, main differences between the, the, the leading parties? We have to understand it is, it is such a big country and there are just so many parties, but if I've just put it in layman term, the incumbent um, government, it is Congress-led UPA government, which, is, which has been in power for a very long time. The opposition party, BJP, which is uh, by, as opinions polls suggest, could be the party which will come in power. And there, there is the newly formed uh, Aam Aadmi Party, or the Common Man's Party, which is known as anti-corruption party. So, uh, they made sure that uh, they have a huge social media presence. Arvind Kejriwal, who's leading the party, is a very media savvy guy. They are promising things to India that India hasn't heard of for many, many years. So there is a chance, because I think India wants a change. And when you want to change, you often vote for something, someone who comes up with fresh ideas. And Arvind Kejriwal is seen as someone uh, who is coming with fresh ideas. So, so tell me, what are the main challenges that uh, a new government will face in running India? The fiscal deficit, the economy, is basically, if you look at the wider idea, the economy is suffering. India has had, right now, has a fiscal deficit of $86 billion, which is huge. Inflation is at 8.3%, again, huge. People, infl when you say, what does it actually mean that inflation is at 8.6%? It means I have to pay much more to buy my vegetable, my milk, my bread. And that's not a good idea. So the middle class or the low middle class is really suffering. And that is one issue. The economy is one issue that uh, really everybody, whoever is the new government, will have to address it. That, you know, you have to fix the economy. And I think that is the biggest challenge for any government that will come to power in, um, in the next month. Now, of course, there's about one and a half million Indians living right here in the UAE. How are they involved in this election? Now, non-resident Indians or Indians can vote. That is also first for this election. So I can definitely take a flight out, go to my city if I have a voter's ID card and if I'm registered at my nearest uh, polling booth or the constituency I belong to, I can go and vote. But I cannot vote sitting here. So voting from foreign locations is not allowed for um, NRIs or non-resident Indians, but I can definitely go to my uh, country, go to my city and vote. Uh, so of course, as you mentioned, a massive election, huge process that's involving 11 million security guards. Uh, this has had a knock-on effect into uh, other areas that um, seem fairly unpredictable. How has that worked? Cricket. I mean, we know the IPL 7 is being played in the UAE the first half. And the main reason why IPL or the Indian Premier League was moved out of the country and into UAE was because the government could not handle the security of both. A cricket, I mean, IPL cricket basically has, um, you know, players from all over the world coming and convening to play. And there is this uh, elections that's happening and 11 million, peop uh, 11 million security personnel were deployed on ground for just elections. So where will the other security personnel come from if you also have to handle IPL? So IP IPL was very conveniently moved to the UAE mm -hmm. and uh, the election commissioner is now taking care of just the elections which need a huge contingent of um, paramilitary, military and army on the ground. Mm -hmm.